Hi, I'm Samantha and welcome to Honey Hill. Today I'm going to be featuring part one of a three-part series going over my 2020 seed haul. Uh, today I'm going to be focusing on the flowers in my cutting garden. Um, I am a home gardener, but I want to grow beautiful flowers that I can cut myself or arrangements. And being that I designed and built this home only 18 months ago, we have a baby landscape, a baby garden. Um, it is very much early days here. So I am going to be decking out our garden with annuals and cut flowers to fill in the gaps of all the places where the baby perennials haven't grown to maturity. So without further ado, let's get started. So I keep all of my cut flower seeds in this storage uh, box for seeds that I purchased from Terrain, which is an online uh, retail store, but they also have uh, brick and mortar shops, I believe, on the East Coast. Um, but I have everything organized here in alphabetical order. And starting from the beginning, I have a lot of seeds, so here we go. Um, the first seed, the first flower I'm gonna be growing here is amaranth. So amaranth is a filler flower and just adds beautiful structure to arrangements. I have not grown this before myself, so this will be a learning year for me and I hope to bring you guys along with seed starting and winter sowing and everything from beginning to end, hopefully to get a good harvest of all of these flowers. So the variety I have here is coral fountains. I love peachy coraled pink tones. And you're gonna be seeing a lot of that repeat throughout the seeds that I've chosen for this year. Um, I also have a variety called Hot Biscuits from Florette. And if you are into cut flowers at all, I'm sure you've heard of Florette before. She is located um, actually on the west side of Washington, about six hours or so away from where I live. And here we go. So now the next one I've got here is Ami Magus. Uh, it's just a Queen Anne's Lace. This is also from Select Seeds and it's a uh, RHS award winner. So you know that it's tried and true. Then we have uh, Queen Anne's Lace, the chocolate lace flower, which um, you're gonna see many of the varieties I specifically chose this year for form, for color, but also for how you sow them. I do not have a greenhouse or an endless amount of space in my home to start seeds. I also have four little children running around and so to have trays and trays of seeds that they can get their hands on um, would be a little precarious. So I chose things that I can either winter sow or direct seed outside. Uh, Queen Anne's Lace is a great one for direct sow. And I'm excited to see. I actually have a packet from Select Seeds and I have another packet of quite a few more from Johnny's, which is also a great, uh, well-known seed company. They've been around for a long time. They're very informative. The next one I'm gonna be growing this year is Bells of Ireland. These are another filler flower, just beautiful structure, chartreuse, chartreuse green, and I'm excited to see this one. I'm gonna skip over a few that I'm probably not gonna get around to growing this year, but cup and saucer vine. This is an annual uh, vine that has these beautiful cup and saucer flowers. They look like little teacups and remind me of something that you would see in Alice in Wonderland. These are the purple and these are from Florette. I, they also come in a, a, a white one, I believe, the Alba, the white cup and saucer flower. And I'm very excited for that one as well. Uh, I love Cosmos. So I'm going to be growing tons and tons of Cosmos. So the two varieties, I, I grew quite a few last year. Last year was my first season in my new garden. So I only have one season under my belt here at Honey Hill. And 
I kind of got a feel for what works. I garden in a zone 5B. We are on a hilltop, so we are exposed to very strong winds, harsh sun. Uh, we have true clay soil. We also are on top of a lot of decomposed granite, so there's either thick clay or hard, hard granite that we're digging into. We have a tremendous amount of deer pressure. So I'm always keeping those elements in mind when I'm choosing the flowers that I wanna grow. And now that I have a season under my belt, I have a better feel for what thrives here and what the deer tend to leave alone. Although if you have deer, you know that if they're hungry enough, it doesn't matter if they're not supposed to eat it, they'll eat it. So. Um, for Cosmos, the two varieties I'm focusing on the most that I bought a lot of seeds for are Rubenza, which has these beautiful antique shades of mauve and like a row of dusty rose and an antique maroon. I do not like red, but this is that like romantic version of someone who might want to try some red in their garden. I have a lot of Rubenza and the other variety, those are from Select Seeds. Um, the other variety I have, also from Select Seeds, and I have some from Florette as well, is Apricot Lemonade. And this is a relatively new release uh, out of England. And it's this beautiful, it's a little bit shorter in stature, whereas the Rubenza, they can get up to three and a half feet tall. I found last year that I had Cosmos in this similar variety getting up to four, five feet tall. So we'll see how these do. The Rubenza are a little bit shorter. They clock in at about two and a half feet high. Um, but they're this beautiful, blush, peachy, soft yellow, creamy, just all that good, yummy stuff you want. And I just love the form of Cosmos. They're just so romantic and and beautiful and they're they're floriferous they'll just the more you cut them the more they bloom their heads off and that's what you want when you have cut flowers right so i have lots of apricot lemonade from select seeds from florette so moving on from the cosmos i will be growing some chinese forget-me-nots as a filler and just adding that kind of airy blue tone to bouquets and to the garden. I, I want to equally focus on creating beautiful flower arrangements as well as kind of translating that beauty of a well-formed designer bouquet into the landscape. I want to have that kind of garden that feels dreamy and magical and where the tones and colors are well thought out and they reflect what I love. And the beauty of annuals is that as style and taste changes over the years, I'm not beholden to, to these colors, but I can't, I can't see myself falling out of love with them anytime soon, but um, you never know. So next up we have flowering tobacco or uh, Nicotiana, which is kind of more commonly known. So I have the Nicotiana grandiflora, which is the jasmine larger flowered uh, uh, Nicotiana. These are poisonous, so be mindful of that with children. Foxgloves. I tried and failed last year to grow foxgloves from seed, in seed trays in the house. I am going to test out winter sowing and I'm gonna take you guys along on that journey. But if you have any tips for growing foxgloves from seed, let me know. Because last year, my experience was that they germinated, they started to grow their first initial leaves, not their true leaves, and then they kind of stalled out and didn't grow much past that. And um, I so with foxgloves, when you sow them from seed, they don't flower until the second year because they are biennial. Uh, so know that, however, you want them to be a good sized plug plant before you're placing them into the garden. So I'm gonna try again. And now that I know a little bit more um, about what they need, hopefully I'll have much more success. But these two varieties are from Florette. They were new releases for her this year in 2020. 
This is Apricot Beauty, which is, has been around for a long time. It's a classic, a beautiful English foxglove. And then Sutton's Pam. Um, what does it say here? Yes, they're the white bell-shaped blooms with striking plum-colored throats. And I, pollinators love foxgloves. I had bumblebees and we had honeybees all over our foxgloves last year. And I just want to have as many of them as possible. However, this is digitalis. This is very poisonous. So again, use extreme caution around children and pets. So the next flower I'm growing here is blue lace flower. I, or didiscus, yes. These are from Select Seeds and I'm very excited to grow this also as another filler in bouquets. They're this is beautiful, soft, it kind of has that similar feel to Queen Anne's lace, that airy, flat topped with all those little miniature flowers um, and another pollinator favorite. And I believe that they can be direct seeded as well. Yes. Anytime I can get something that can be direct seeded, wonderful. And foxgloves, they will sow themselves around. So hopefully if I can get these to grow this year and then flower next year, I will just sprinkle their seeds from their flowers all around the garden wherever I want foxgloves. And hopefully that will result in many foxglove babies. Um, Let's see, so the next flower I have are larkspurs, and I'm growing a few different varieties of larkspurs this year. The one I am probably the most excited about is the very popular Earl Grey, which this is one that is from Florette, and they are these beautiful uh, lavender gray flowers, tall spikes, they're, they're related to delphiniums. I love all the, I love delphiniums. I love any of the spiky, romantic English cottage flowers. That is just everything that I love. Um, I'm so excited to grow these. These need um, cold stratification. So she recommends putting these in the freezer for a week before you direct sow them into the garden. I am going to do that as well as try to winter sow a few of them to see to see how they do. I purchased quite a lot of them from Johnny's. This one is Misty Lavender, very similar to Earl Grey in that Misty Lavender color. And then we have Galilee Lilac, which was another beautiful one, and Galilee Blue. So I hope to be growing all of these this year. The other, I have one more of the Earl Grey, and then the other Larkspur I have is called Splish Splash. This, I believe, is an exclusive to Florette. The only other place I could see that you could find these were in the UK, which many of those companies no longer ship to the US. Um, so these were these pink, purple, mixture of really lovely colors. So I'm excited to see these in the garden. Next up, I have Love in a Mist. I am growing, these are another one that you can, you can direct seed. In fact, they do not like being transplanted, so they recommend not to start them indoors. Um, I have Starry Night and I have African Bride. African Bride is more, is a white with that chocolatey, center and then the starry night mix has blue different shades of blue um, very very lovely wonderfully excited i know that these tend to self sow i have six acres up here and only about an acre of it maybe right now is landscape so i'm in this place where I, the more things that self sew and that I can edit to make it look the way that I want it to look, the better. I don't, I, that doesn't bother me. Okay, so next up I have pale purple coneflower. I chose this coneflower specifically because I have some beds around the house that I am going to focus on prairie planting, meaning that I'm going to have a lot, because we have, we're on the hilltop and we have a lot of exposure to wind, I want to have 
um, lots of ornamental grasses, Russian sage, lavender, echinacea. So I am focusing this year, I grew a uh, scabiosa or a uh, pincushion flower last year and had great luck with it from starting it indoors. I am focusing all of my energy on growing one variety. Um, again, I found last year flowers that I loved that did well, but I'm really honing in on the colors that I want in my garden. And this color is Fata Morgana, and it's another soft, peachy, creamy, beautiful shade, really lovely. Hi, so it's a new day. We had some technical difficulties yesterday. So I'm just gonna pick up where we left off and finish this seed haul for everyone. So where we left off yesterday was with all of the flocks that I am going to be growing this year. So I love, love flocks. It has to be one of my favorite flowers. I did not grow any annual flocks in my garden last year, so I'm really looking forward to adding lots of it. So the, the, main, the two main varieties I'm focusing on this year are Phlox Cherry Caramel. And um, that one is a buttercream yellow with a raspberry cherry colored throat. Beautiful annual Phlox. So the Phlox I am probably the most excited about growing this year is Phlox Creme Brulee. So Creme Brulee is this beautiful, antique, buttery, creamy shade of Phlox with purple variegated uh, flowers that have just this very rippled, tawny, each flower looks a little bit different, almost like a painting in a way. So I'm excited to have these dotted throughout my garden. I'm going to be uh, trialing these throughout my garden beds as well as maybe a couple of rows of them, but I'm not quite sure, we'll see. Um, so. So cherry caramel and creme brulee are the two main varieties I'm growing. And then I'm also going to be testing out um, a couple of others. So I, I got some creme brulee from Florette as well as two other varieties that she uh, released this year. Uh, one is Phlox Dolce de Leche, which is a solid, beautiful cream colored Phlox, as well as, if I can find it in here, Phlox uh, whipped cream. And whipped cream is a white whipped cream colored Phlox. I'm also really excited to see this one. I just want to have Phlox everywhere. So after Phlox, I will be growing Iceland poppies. I tried to grow Iceland poppies last year and I did not have great success. I know on Florette's blog, she writes that Iceland poppies are um, suggested to be grown by a more seasoned grower or gardener. And I am looking forward to giving these another try. They're a little bit sensitive. Um, so I, I'm gonna be trying and I so want these to grow in my garden. So the three varieties I'm gonna be growing of Iceland poppies from Florette this year are Pastel Meadows, Giant Peach, and her Sherbert Mix. I'm so excited to see these. I really hope I can be successful in getting these to grow. So after Iceland poppies are Shirley poppies, and Shirley poppies are different in that they can be direct sown into the garden. They actually prefer that. Iceland poppies are unique in that they are one of the few poppies that I'm aware of that actually like prefer to be started indoors or need to be started indoors. The rest uh, generally do not like to have their roots disturbed. So the two varieties of, ice, or of Shirley poppies, excuse me, that I'm going to be growing this year are Amazing Gray. Now, I purchased these from, from Florette, from Select Seeds, and also from Swallowtail. Amazing Gray are these beautiful, um, 
dark, moody shades of gray. It's so unique for a flower to, to hold these true tones of gray. And I did grow these last year in my garden, but they were teeny tiny. And they're supposed to grow up to 30 inches in height. And mine probably only grew to about six inches and the flowers were minuscule. Um, and I believe that was because where they were planted, they were getting overwatered. And typically, um, the poppies I had growing in my garden last year that received less water um, were much happier and grew to maturity. So even the ones that I did have grow, they, they don't look real. They're absolutely stunning. So if you have a chance to get your hands on these seeds, please do. Um, so again, select seeds, a swallowtail and floret. I believe Baker's Creek Heirloom Seeds also has them this year. The second variety of Shirley poppies I am trialing this year are the Pandora. So Pandora is, a, is that rosy, berry version of Amazing Gray. It holds a lot of the same qualities in terms of the how each flower is slightly different from each other and they're this just very kind of unbelievably magical looking flowers. So I hope that I have great success with these as well. So um, next up is Rudbeckia. So I'm growing one variety of Rudbeckia and this is Rudbeckia Sahara. And these are different shades of peach, rose, rust. Um, these will be blooming in the late summer and autumn, which will be beautiful in autumnal bouquets um, and also just in the garden. I'm so excited to see these. I hope these perform well. I'm not sure. I, I think what I'm gonna try for, for the Sahara Rubecchias is to winter sow some. I may start them indoors to be safe since I only have one packet here, but I'm not, I'm not quite sure. If you've ever tried a winter sowing Rubecchia and had good success, please let me know. So the next uh, flowers I am growing here are stalks. Now stalks are those deliciously spicy scented, um, beautiful upright blooms. And I am growing mainly one um, variety this year, possibly two. So the one I have that I, that I loved that I grew last year was Vintage Brown. I did start these indoors and had good success with, with them. Um, and I planted them in several places in my yard, both on the east, the south, and the uh, west facing um, sides of my house, which has slightly different water and um, of course different sun and wind, so wind protection. So they seem to do best for me on the east facing side of my house. So I'm gonna um, take that in mind when I'm planting them this planting them out into the garden this year. You just kind of never know. It's always good to, to um, discover where the little micro zones are in your own garden where flowers um, will perform their best. The other variety I do have that I might try as well is the uh, apricot stock. All of these were purchased from Florette. And then next up I have straw flower. And the two varieties of straw flower I'm growing are vintage white and candy pink. So I grew straw flower last year. I had wonderful success with it. I grew it, started it from seed indoors. They just bloomed and bloomed and bloomed for me. They're a cut and come again flower. They can be dried and look gorgeous in uh, fall and winter arrangements when you really are craving that color from the summer. So I'm excited to grow more of these. I'm excited to grow these colors specifically and to be able to use them all year long. Next up, I have uh, sunflowers. Now, sunflowers, um, you can direct seed them into the garden, uh, but they are a huge deer attractant. For me last year, when my sunflowers got about two feet in height and they were starting to bloom, uh, bud up, the deer came and mowed them down to the ground and then they are so hardy, they grew up again, they branched out and they started to bud up again 
and then the deer came and mowed them back down. And what I found was that the, it was just attracting the deer into my garden during a time of year when they leave, they leave us alone a little bit more because there's so many more options out in the wild for them to eat. So I will be growing sunflowers again. I'm not for, because I don't have a tremendous amount of protected space for them. I can't grow as many as I would like this year. Um, so the varieties I chose very uh, mindfully for their color and form are the Sunflower Pro Cut Plum, which is that it suits into that, that color palette I have of the, the dusty, plummy, tan um, colors, a beautiful, a beautiful sunflower. The Pro Cut series were, are, were specifically bred to be cut flowers, meaning that they are pollenless, I believe, which means that when you bring them into the house, they're not going to be dusting yellow pollen all over your table. The second variety I am growing is the Pro Cut White Light. I purchased these seeds from Florette, and these have a soft yellow, um, soft yellow petals and a tan golden colored center. Really beautiful, beautiful one. And the third one I am growing is Ruby Eclipse, which they describe as looking kind of like a strawberry lemonade um, sunflower. I noticed that the photos for these ones on the Floret website uh, look a lot different from the ones here um, on the packet I ordered from Select Seeds. So I'm hoping they look more like the ones that I saw on Florette, which aren't as bright yellow on the on the outer um, on the outer of the petals. So we'll we'll see about that one. Now, next up, I have verbena. I am growing two types of verbena: the classic verbena bonariensis. It is an annual in my zone. However, it is supposed to self sow, and for me. I love verbena. I, I want to have it um, dotted around all over the place. It, blow, it flows in the wind. I found it to be incredibly deer resistant. In fact, I still have leftover stalks from, um, from last year that the deer have never touched. And that's, that's saying something because I've, I had deer just uh, this afternoon coming very close up to my back door, three of them. So they, um, they're, they're pretty hungry this time of year and they have left these, these alone. And the second variety I'm growing is um, out of Bampton, uh, England, Bampton in the UK, and is Verbena Bampton. It is a bushier, airier, um, type of verbena. It is annual in my zone. It's perennial down to a zone seven. I garden in a zone 5B. We were actually reclassified as a zone 6B. Um, however, I think to be safe, I'm still gardening <laughs> with, with that in mind that I'm still zone five. I'm gonna trial out this year a couple of zone six plants and see how they do. We've had a relatively mild winter, which, um, I think people around the Northwest have also uh, noted. Next I have Yero. I am growing one type of Yero this year, one type of um, Yero from seed, I should, meant, should say, and this is the Summer Berries from Florette. So here she says that these bloom in shades of raspberry, peach, coral, blush, rose, and buttercream. These are a huge um, pollinator attractor. They're beautiful in, in bouquets. I love yarrow and I am so excited to be growing these in my garden this year. I grew some um, outdoors last year that are, are perennial in my zone. Um, and the deer are not supposed to like them. They're supposed to be deer resistant, however, um, towards the fall, the deer were munching on mine. So we'll see, we'll see how how these do with, hold up with the deer. And let's see, last but not least for this video are my zinnias. So there again are two varieties of zinnias I am primarily focusing on. I have a couple others that I might dot in as well. I had great luck with zinnias last year and these can be direct sown into the garden. They they prefer full sun, a full sun position and I planted them on the south side of my house which gets 
no shade from morning until the sun sets and um, they did wonderfully well for me. Then the deer did not touch them. So I, anything that the deer don't touch, again, I want to plant more of in my garden. So I am very excited to be growing the Zinnia Queenie Red Lime. This is an RHS award winner. These come in beautiful shades of that um, rose, a little bit of lime, um, lots of different variations of those tones and absolutely a beautiful zinnia. I'm so excited to have this in my garden this year. And then I am incredibly excited to be growing a Florette exclusive. I believe these were from her propagation program over at her farm. And this is the Zinnia Golden Hour. These come in those tawny, peachy, uh, buff shades that um, oh, I just love. And it's you've just seen it over and over in what I'm going to be growing this year. These get up to 40 inches tall. And um, I am just incredibly, incredibly excited. Excuse me, these get up to 48 inches tall. And um, I'm so excited to have these in my garden this year. I was able to um, get a hold of three of those packets. And then um, I have one more here, also from Florette. This is the Oklahoma Ivory, which was a discontinued seed that um, I think another farmer in, in Washington State, where I live, uh, uh, brought back into production and Florette sold them this year. And these are the Creamy Ivory, um, zinnias, which will also look beautiful in the garden, beautiful in arrangements. I'm just so excited to tuck these in. These get up to 40 inches in height. So that's it for my seed haul today. I am going to be doing a separate video all about my sweet peas. I have so many sweet peas that they need a video of their own. And I grew them um, two ways last year. I started them indoors and I direct seeded them into the garden. And for me, they did amazingly well and, and I've heard from several gardeners in my uh, in my area that they struggle with sweet peas so I was so thankful that they did so well so I'll be going over my growing tips for sweet peas and as well as the varieties I've chosen in the next video see you bye